I am going to attempt to demonstrate the stages of mitosis using the poppet beads um, to make sure that you guys uh, who have done that lab were able to um, set up your poppet beads and um, correctly simulate the stages of mitosis. So I'm going to do it on this um, lab table top and uh, let me explain to you what I have drawn here. So what you see in front of you is this is a plasma membrane and this plasma membrane is it, it's the membrane we're just going to use an animal cell for this example because this looks more like an animal cell and of course right here in the center this is the nucleus and um, so this must be since the nucleus is um, intact since you see it it's it, the nucleus is present the nuclear envelope is intact we know that this cell is in interphase it is in interphase and during interphase the um, chromosomes are in the form called chromatin so the chromosomes have not condensed at this point so as we move into prophase the nuclear envelope is going to dissolve and i will represent that by just getting my hands dirty and just gradually erasing it and um I don't like the way that feels. So here we go. So during prophase, the nuclear envelope is going to dissolve. It has dissolved. Um, and you will also see these structures called centrosomes, which in animal cells are composed of two centrioles, which are kind of like, they're barrel shaped structures. They're kind of like at a perpendicular angle to each other. And so there'll be another one somewhere else in the, within the cell. So these two centrioles form the centrosomes. The centrosomes will begin moving to opposite ends of the cell. They're moving toward opposite ends of the cell in prophase. So this is prophase that we're demonstrating. You will also see spindle fibers or spindle microtubules emerging from the centrosome. So the nuclear envelope disappeared, the spindle fibers are appearing, and we also are going to see chromosomes condensing. Now I made mine a little bit bigger than what the directions say, but we're gonna see these chromosomes kind of not in any regular arrangement. Um, you can see that each one is a pair of sister chromatids because they did duplicate during the S phase of interphase. So this is basically what's happening in prophase of mitosis. And then we have in our um, textbook, it talks about, in our slides, it talks about a stage called prometaphase. Now during prometaphase, this region, this region that my fingers are on, which is the region that holds the sister chromatids together, is actually called the centromere but the centromere forms another structure forms on the centromere called the kinetochore and during prometaphase the the spindle fibers attach to the kinetochores of the sister chromatids so i can draw a fiber attached to each of these kinetochores oh i hate that sound Okay, here's one, and here's one. So during prometaphase, a spindle fiber attaches to the kinetochores, which are at the center of each pair of sister chromatids. And what they're doing is moving those sister chromatids to the center or the metaphase plate of the cell. What I have, sh um, have shown for you here is a cell that has reached metaphase. So pro-metaphase is over and now the cell is in metaphase. I ended up turning it a different way. I put the um, centrosomes, 
at the top and the bottom of the cell because I couldn't line up my chromosomes the other way. So this is our metaphase plate and our pairs of sister chromatids or just this would just be a duplicated this is a duplicated chromosome with two sister chromatids so each of our chromosomes each of our four chromosomes our four duplicated chromosomes are lined up at the metaphase plate and the spindle which kind of looks a little bit like a football you can see that in the microscope when you're looking at cells in different stages of mitosis you can actually see the spindle fibers as well as the chromosomes but you see that there is a fiber attached here and here to every one of the kinetochores of the sister chromatids. So this is what metaphase looks like. Now what we're going to see happen in anaphase, I can just show you um, the spindle fibers or spindle microtubules are going to shorten. And as they shorten, they're going to pull the sister chromatids apart. And the sister chromatids will begin to move. I want to show them like they're kind of like they're blowing. Um, they will begin to move through um, to the other opposite pole or the opposite end of the cell. So this is anaphase. This is when the sister chromatids separate in mitosis. Now, what you see is that four sets of single-stranded chromosomes are moving toward opposite ends of the cell. So each daughter cell is still going to get the same number of chromosomes as the parent cell. They're just going to be a single chromatid instead of two sister chromatids but they will contain the exact same genetic information. There's no difference. Um, a, sister, a pair of sister chromatids is just an identical copy. There's no difference in the, the um, number of genes in this versus this. Each one, whether it's a duplicated chromosome or a single-stranded chromosome, they uh, contain the exact same genetic information, so the same number of genes and the same exact genes. So what's going to happen is in telophase, these chromosomes are going to arrive at opposite ends of the cell, and then we're going to start to see, I'm probably going to need a little bit of help here, going to start to see that process um, called cytokinesis that's going to occur simultaneously with telophase. Um, and it's going to be where the cell forms a cleavage furrow on either end because it is starting to pinch in half. So this is what telophase would look like, as well as in telophase, the steps that happened in prophase will reverse. So your spindle fibers will disappear. Spindle microtubules will disappear. and your nuclear envelopes will begin to reform, reappear around those chromosomes, those sets, two sets of four chromosomes, and um, eventually your cell will split, will completely split, and you'll have two daughter cells. These are elongated daughter cells. Apologize for that, but that's just how it turned out. But anyway, this would be the end of mitosis. It would represent the end of mitosis. And you may be wondering, okay, if those two daughter cells are genetically identical to the parent cell, then why did the parent cell have, th this is just half of what the parent cell had? Well, it's because these daughter cells are going to go into their next interface. And in their next interphase, during the S phase, they, this will replicate 
and it will form that X shape again. It will have a sister chromatid attached to it again, but it happens in the next interphase. But what you do need to understand is that you started out with a parent cell that had four chromosomes, and you ended up with two daughter cells genetically identical to the parent that also have four chromosomes. They are clones of the parent cell.